for invitation to be our guest speaker this day. Can we start? Uh, we are waiting for uh, the seat, sir, also. If he is with the coming, Mirashi, can you confirm? We're just waiting for our uh, session address, uh, Mr. Jagjit Singh. Uh, if he is here, then we'll start the program. <coughs> so we can do that. Yes. Tanvi, we can start the proceeding. Mr. Singh has stuck in a meeting, so he will be joining a little late. But we can start with uh, Mr. Bama right now. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so you for your we can start the proceeding. Thank you for your confirmation. Thank you. So a very good morning to one and all from the foothills of Shivalik, from JP University of Information Technology. Uh, to this webinar program on latest trends in green buildings and which has been conducted in coherence with IGBC Chandigarh chapter and on the auspicious occasion of World Green Building Week, which has been celebrated from 12th to 16th of September 2022. So we are very fortunate to have three eminent speakers who have been working with green buildings since such a long time. And today we will be having their expertise shared with us. Just a brief about the JP University of Information Technology and in specific about the civil engineering department here at JUIT Vatna uh, Here we offer two BTEC degree programs, which are in civil engineering. And one another program which we have launched this year is of civil engineering with computer applications. This curriculum has been specially designed to keep in keeping in view the emerging civil engineering needs of the country, as well as the modern emphasis on the IT-enabled civil engineering services. Further, at master's level, the department offers two MTech programs in construction management, environmental engineering, and instructional engineering. In addition to a PhD degree is also offered in the areas of geotechnical engineering, structural engineering, construction management, hydropower engineering, environmental engineering, and water resources. So coming to today's program, uh, which are the latest trends in green buildings, I like to invite our first speaker, Mr. Ashwini Bhambaji, who is the director of Pit Logic Controls. He is a first generation entrepreneur, graduate from PEC and MBA from UBS Chandigarh. He is a strategist and passionate to promote new technology for better control and energy efficiency. He is expert in exploring new opportunities to carry benefits to technology for mass adoption. Evolving through the past 32 years over newer applications spread across business segments of industry, infrastructure, residential, and commercial space. Over the past two decades, he has been in the building's control space and is keen to share his experience and learnings today with us. With these words, uh, I hand over the stage to Mr. Ashwini Bambaji to give his brief presentation on role of integrated building management systems and latest trends and technologies. Over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, 
I'm as as uh, uh, I was introduced. Uh, it's a it's a privilege uh, to be a part of this session to share my experiences with the the audience that we have today. And uh, uh, as as uh, it was uh, stated that I have been into the space for last more than twenty years, exploring newer applications. Uh, wherein we can add value, uh, you know, to the to the users, be, be it industry, be it uh, commercial buildings, be it infra buildings, or be it residence also. Also, when we started, uh, it was uh, automation was a very very uh, unfamiliar term for general public. Today, it is a part of our daily life. So uh, I, I start with uh, the subject, uh, and and I will you know take you through the entire journey, right? So I just share my screen now. Sure. So, is it visible now? Yes, sir. It is visible. You may yeah. uh, do it. May maximize the same. So, so. Uh, to begin so, with, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt in between. Uh, you might have shared only the PPT screen, so we are only we are still able to see the full PPT, not the full screen one. If you can share your entire screen uh, through this uh, present option, then we will be able to see what you are seeing on your screen. Currently, we are able to, not able to see the full screen slideshow. Uh, in the present option, if you can just go through. Uh, present entire screen, your entire screen, then whatever you will be able to see, we'll be able to also see. So is it now visible, the entire screen? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, now it's great, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. So we begin with the, the presentation. And uh, a role of integrated building management system, latest trends and technologies. First, the objective of this presentation, you know, uh, we know we have evolved over these years of a comprehensive uh, solution to managing the utilities and the services of our building. However, we have, we have faced challenges over this period, and that's something which I would share uh, with you in this presentation. And uh, uh, eventually, you know, what are we doing to improve upon what we have and what are the disruptions that are taking place in the industry? So get started with the uh, uh, contents. We'll, we'll go through, rather, we'll spend, no, won't spend much time on... Uh, uh, discussing what an integrated building management system is, but we'll we'll put our focus on points two and three, wherein wherein you know the typical approach that is being followed uh, till now, what challenges it is creating, and how do we you know reach a point where system delivers and reaches the. Uh, you know, uh, potential users. So, uh, to begin with, you know, what is the intent of a building management system? The integ or or what you call as integrated building management system? I would say we try to derive majorly four benefits out of it. First is improving the efficiency. Now, it is efficiency in terms of the deployed resources, utilities, in terms of the performance of the equipment. 
Second aspect that we uh, cover in 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 the building management system, that is, we want the equipment that are there in the building, uh, they are safe, and the users who are operating them or uh, or there in the environment, they are also safe. The third aspect is related to the comfort, comfort of the users of the building, and uh, providing them with a healthy environment. And the fourth is providing connectivity. Now, connectivity, what I mean is that these systems are can be can be exploited to their highest uh, you know uh, benefits if the appropriate connections are there in the environment within the building and outside the building also uh, this slide would give you the kind of comprehensive services uh, that can be covered through building management system it is it is the principal part you would see is the utilities that are there in the building the hvac the electrical system the plumbing system the other safety services the other safety services uh, like you have the fi the fire alarm system the uh, uh, cctv and access control systems uh, which are which are uh, providing the the appropriate access and then we have the other uh, data services which provide the required interconnectivity uh, and, and and that's how you know the best uh, out of these uh, building management systems can be der derived so uh, most commonly covered services in a integrated building management system is air conditioning ventilation lighting access control cctv fire detection and firefighting lifts plumbing electricity distribution and energy management so so when we when we design a building management system we figure out the hardware required to inter to connect these services to the to the users so that they are able to get the best out of, the, out of them so in this schematic if you see you have the bms hardware you have servers and uh, user interfaces uh, which are which are used to uh, have the required information uh, there are networks which which are in the shape of uh, our networking uh, solutions and the cabling the cabling the the then we move on to the bms hardware part which are which are in terms of the controllers that we have and then the sensors and actuators what we call as field devices these are then interconnected with these uh, controllers and eventually the inputs from the sensors reach uh, the, the controllers and the logical functions for which these controllers are programmed uh, they are executed through the actuators in addition to this we have the networks through uh, communication standards or protocols which provide the soft connectivity the soft points of different systems we we go on to the services that we are we are catering to we would have solution covering chilled water plants uh, cooling towers condensed water heating water plants exhaust systems ventilation this is typically for the hvac part and this is where you know we try to work on the air quality and the the you know uh, uh, temperature conditions or HVAC, uh, humidity conditions which are required to be maintained now when we say integrated building management system again we say typical systems which are integrated with the bms systems uh, are lighting systems emergency lighting systems fire fire protection and security systems cctv metering solutions and the other conveniences like or the, or, or the, uh, the the services uh, in 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 typical like elevators escalators right so these all systems are interconnected in in the 
that if there is any alarm, uh, for instance, uh, from the fire alarm, uh, we are, you know, able to uh, condition the other services like access control or or the HVAC so that the the damage is controlled or minimized or avoided. These are some of the user interfaces, how the data that is generated out of BMS is presented. Uh, it is it could be in the shape of a, through through a graphical user interface. It can be in the shape of dashboards. It can be in the shape of graphs. It is through alarms and reports that we uh, get the required information of the events that are happening in the building. Uh, now, what benefits we target through BMS? We are able to monitor all the systems in the building on real-time basis. We are able to customize controls so that they suit us uh, most you know, appropriately. We integrate all the building systems on a, on, on a single uh, platform. Uh, we, if there, there are failure of certain uh, equipment, we know what is the remedial steps that we need to take. And that can be designed to be automatically taken care of. We are able to reduce our operating and running costs. We are able to you know, reduce our manpower cost or, or the uh, labor that is required to be uh, deployed. We increase the comfort. Uh, we improve the air quality and other services. And as I said, safety and security. And last but not the least, the data generation, which is used for required analysis to improve upon the system and, and, and the services covered. Now, uh, the basic thing where, where I really wanted to focus this presentation was on uh, what is the what are, what are the challenges? What is first? We let us understand what is the approach that we follow. The approach when we implement a uh, BMS IBMS project is we start with the project identification. There are stakeholders, consultants, and BMS product OEMs and contractors. They get together to work on the identified opportunity. The tenders are made. The IO summary is prepared. The equipment list is done. The budgeting is done. And the schedule of implement is, implement, implementation is decided. Then, in, in the process of implementation, you start with detailed drawings, shop drawings. Then, uh, there are, you know, uh, coordination. You start with the coordination with third-party vendors for, for coordination and provisioning. The, the physical work starts with conducting, cabling, uh, then sensor installation, then equipment installation, terminations. Finally, we reach the point where programming and integration is done to hand over the system uh, to the user. Now, if you see the entire process, this typically takes two to four years. That is the experience. When, particularly, you know, when, when we're targeting BMS, till now, it has been focused on the newer buildings. So newer buildings means the entire construction phase plus the design phase before the construction start plus the handing over stage when the user is already inside the building. Now, this entire phase uh, is, is when the entire you know, BMS activity is being carried out. And this plan is pretty long. It, it can, it is, in, in most of the cases, it runs into years and years, right? Now, the stable managing of the process during this, this long duration itself is a big challenge, right? So what are the what are the expected issues we face? The, the, there are issues of coordination with various agencies. There are cost and time overruns and cash flow issues. There are certain hardware and software upgrades that that are, you know, in the process of these, this long period, they may, may have come up. Some of the uh, part of the hardware or the software might have gone obsolete. Now you also have to deal with that situation. And then... There are changes. People change at site. People change at the integrator level, and and the entire exercise uh, further complicates the entire thing. Now this all leads to compromised commissioning and handing over of the system. 
Now, post handing over, what are the challenges? So, uh, if you do not have the competent and stable manpower at the end user, what will happen? The handing over itself will be improper. Uh, the, the people who are taking over the system, they are not adequately trained. This inadequacy results in uh, poor commitments and lack of under, understanding of the system. This further results into casual handling, systems would break down. Now, if let's say there's an event taking place or the exercise going on or the building systems are in use, typically, the, typically these people would tend to, you know, bypass these systems and the entire worthiness of the system and the trust in the system itself is lost. So what are, what are the remedial things we need to do? We need to take care of all these, particularly the time frame, particularly, and, and if we are targeting only the new buildings, we cannot do much about it, right? So, so what we, what we are, what, what we are, uh, what are the issues that we're facing? Uh, you see, barring exceptions, IBMS is always considered for new and large buildings. Ex existing buildings practically do not have uh, BMS at all. And there, there are no proposals for smaller buildings considered. Almost every detail needs to be planned in the initial stage, like the budgeting. You have to go into the minutest of details to avoid complications in the course of implementation. The design stage becomes very critical, right? And the kind of, you know, uh, once we have decided the product, the scope, upgradation becomes a challenge and, and it is sure that these uh, cases would come up when, when we have a very long duration of the implementation. So, uh, the third is that, that you have to make budget, budgetary provision right in the beginning itself. So mostly, you know, uh, this is dropped or limited owing to the high time, high one-time investment that is required. Now this limits, begin, the limitations begin from design stage and they go on till the handing over and the end user. So what do we need to do? What do we need to do uh, in, in, uh, the, in the context of these compromises that we are facing? So we need to look at the newer trends. We are look, we are requiring to understand what the current challenges are, uh, and 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 we need to customize our offering in such a way that it delivers what it is intended to deliver. So let's say some of the concerns is sustainability. So through BMS, what we expect is higher energy efficiency, lower operating and maintenance cost better indoor, indoor uh, air quality, greater comfort and productivity. Now, these things would help us to achieve the sustainability in the building environment. And that's how we connect building, building management system with sustainability. The second aspect today, which is under focus, is clean energy and carbon neutrality. We are wanting, we are declaring, we are making serious declarations about getting carbon neutral over the years uh, in it over the years to come India itself has given uh, commitments right so so what BMS can contribute uh, it is again you know improving indoor uh, environment improving on the operation and maintenance uh, minimize, min minimizing energy consumption, uh, from non-renewable renewable resources, protecting and conserving water. Now, all this would add to, uh, you know, uh, our, our carbon neutrality, uh, targets of carbon neutrality, right? So, uh, again, you know, the next thing that we are looking at as, as we are entering, uh, rather we are now deep into uh, subjects like artificial intelligence, right? So, we are looking at improved... Now, in larger projects, we are looking at, you know, a, a better asset performance. We are wanting to have predictability uh, as to how the equipment or the system is going to behave over a period of time. And then, ultimately, we need to have a pro proactive maintenance plans so that the panic is avoided, the breakdowns are minimized, the, uh, you know... Uh, we, we are able to come back to a normal in the shortest possible time and minimize damage. 
uh, then you know uh, the biggest thing which i i really men- want to mention in this uh, session today is the benefits of technology should reach maximum potential users so when i mean maximum potential sir i'm afraid your mic has uh, switched off maybe <clears throat> you can just open a google chrome screen uh, from there i guess mic has been switched off <clears throat> yes sir you can turn it back on first first icon Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's on. <laughs> you can again move back to PPT. Okay. Mm, PowerPoint. Uh, yeah. Second yeah. last one. Mm. Next, next one to this. Mm, mm, yes, yes. You can go. You can maybe full screen it again. <laughs> is it fine yes. now yes sir. yes sir. thank you so so uh, my discussion was at this point where we want uh, ibm is uh, to be part of every building every significant building right now the situation is that it is not even uh, a fraction uh, not even 1% of the buildings they are able to have a building management system and take uh, advantage see most of the time when i interact with people i i just ask them do you have a bms system in the building and when they say yes we have i i just ask them is it working and the answer most of the time is either no or or it is compromised and then this is there in less than 1% of the buildings whereas we have very large buildings they are together put together they are consuming a huge amount of uh, you know energy Uh, they all the all the aspects of vms uh, they are deprived of just because of the complexities that i enumerated in my earlier slide so what is the solution i would say one of the solution is wireless iot based ibms now what it does we have controllers which are which do not require any wiring uh, for i'm quite sorry sir again it happened you know my god turn off i'm not understanding how it's happening now it's on yeah <coughs> so uh what do we have in 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 my uh Uh, so i was talking about the iot based bms solution so what it does it is simple to install it it is reaching out to all the retrofit cases that is the existing buildings it means 100% of building which have a significant hvac or systems or other services are kept, you know these 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 services can be extended to these uh installation can be completed within days and when you have a very short time frame of implementing from the day we identify the opportunity till the time we are able to you know deliver the system if it is within days uh, i believe lot of complications and unforeseen challenge challenges can be taken care of uh, it doesn't the best the, the biggest achievement is it doesn't require too much of expertise at the site neither from the installer side nor for the operator so the user does not require too much of expertise because entire solution sits in the cloud there are no costly licenses to be maintained it hardware or servers or the storage for data that is required so this makes the use of technology uh, simple even for a common user and that's the best outcome of uh, this solution now I, i'll just share a slide showing how it is like this is what kind of a network it would be we are catering to all these services it is a cloud based solution uh, 
you would have gateways and these gateways are connected to controllers which are connected to individual equipment now these gateways and controllers do not require any wiring in between and these gateways are then transmitting the entire information over the cloud so result is the moment you identify an opportunity you you identify the the status of the uh, unit over there the status of the system over there you design your uh, hardware and sensors and then finally take a short breakdown uh, sh a short uh, shutdown and within few hours you can impl implement it on a particular equipment and the moment it is connected to the gateway you just have to open the browser put in username password and you are there so it gives you all the controls that you require it gives you all the data logging so no designing or no programming real programming at the site is required this is how the life of the user and the implementer is simplified and this is how the benefit would reach out to its intended audience the, the players like siemens schneider honeywell they are coming up with iot based bmss and they are starting with smaller installations smaller applications but just to tell you there are players who have implemented thousands of uh, ibms systems which are wireless uh, and and they have reached a level wherein they can even in even in the industrial applications they can comply with the requirements of cfr 21 part 11 to that extent it it offers you solutions like clean room applications it offers you uh, elaborate solution it targets uh, you know in hvac it targets through delta t management the real energy saving on the chiller side so uh, just to uh, emphasize the point that it has reached uh, quite a bit of maturity except for very high complex requirements which are which are numbered uh rest of the things can be taken care of and this is something what has started causing disruption in the bm ibms market so a system which was designed for all these years bms is in the in in the, in the you know uh, market for last 30 40 years but the benefits have not really reached the end users in an appropriate manner now is the time that we leverage these new technologies and make sure that bms also becomes uh, a household word with the, all this i finish my presentation thank you so thank you so much sir and this was a very interactive and like very eye opening presentation how much we have come forward into bms and uh, how much more can be done to reach it to the mass level so i had a simple query uh, so if uh, in certain buildings which have been already constructed to retrofit such uh, integrating devices uh, what kind of uh, sensors are present in market which are cost effective also for a certain a middle class person also to implement in their devices because there is a lot of confusion or this kind of uh, mentality is going on that uh, these integrating sensors are of quite high end users only not for uh, in a massively available way so if, if you can give some as, as my experience goes uh, hmm. the, the, the the systems that are the way it is being promoted is now what we really want is that the system should be functional at the shortest possible time yeah. so uh, the typical oems tend to offer sensors along with the controller so it becomes a package solution now when you compare this package solution with the available ibms offers uh, that we have in our in in the, in the conventional approach that we have been following these uh, till now the cost of this solution per equipment is at least 30 35% lower so when you when you really rather than you know going into individual uh, you know sensor costing because when you even in the in the in the industry when you see for the same purpose the range of 
uh, you know, dependability, quality, cost of sensors from different makes with different specifications. They, 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 it's it's com it's very wide. Yeah. So, uh, what what is the purpose of giving sensors along with these controllers is to have a calibrated solution. You yeah. you you are worried about calibration of sensors. A sensor is supposed, let's say, a sensor is supposed to measure temperature. Okay. Now, if it is properly calibrated, if mm -hmm. it is showing thirty degrees centigrade, it should actually be thirty degrees centigrade. Yeah. Right. So so that hassle of calibration, we just want. Uh, the uncertainties, the the causes which can you know uh, create uh, challenges, those are eliminated eliminated right in the beginning itself. So typically, if if I know if I tell you about one of the OEMs, he supplies not just the sensors, he supplies the connecting cable also between the controller and the sensor as a as a as a single package. And yeah. that again is, you know, uh, with the intent that the quality of cable is uh, such that uh, he is sure that whatever, uh, uh, you know, signal it is transmitting, it does not get, you know, uh, uh, diminished or it doesn't, doesn't get altered just because there is a higher impedance mm -hmm. chosen. Okay. So, yeah. Sorry for the interruption. Yes, sir. So that's how we were, what you were saying is uh, the emphasis should be on a calibrated device. Then only we can get calibrated. Actually, the current measurements. Yeah, <laughs> calibrated, dependable, and cost-effective as an overall package. Yeah. So, so just to tell you one thing. Just to make sure that the, uh, the the concerns or the apprehensions of the possible users are addressed, now is the time when where whosoever serious about this and has got a, a decent amount of uh, equipment to be co covered under BMS, he, and he wants to improve his systems availability or or the performance or the energy efficiency. Uh, OEMs have started offering POCs uh, so that uh, proof of concept is uh, demonstrated right in front of them. Uh, we are able to, sitting at our at our locations or the OEMs locations, we are able to reach out those users particularly who permit us to demonstrate the system to mm -hmm. the potential users. You are just required to log in to those systems and you are able to demonstrate the benefit. And as I said, as the faith level goes up, mm -hmm. I remember a time when variable products like variable frequency drives were still in that conceptual stage, particularly from energy saving pros prospect. So there were, you know, uh, in, uh, solution providers or integrators who had made up panels, one side variable frequency drive, second side uh, star delta starter, and then in between an en energy meter. And he would, he would take this panel to the users and say, just install in one of your uh, ID fan or FD fan or any of your equipment, where hmm. uh, with any of your centrifugal devices, and hmm. see what, for yourself. Within days, you will realize the amount of energy saving that this VFD is going to bring it to you. So hmm. the same stage, I believe, is now for IoT-based BMS. And probably there are OEMs who are taking initiative on this. Yeah, there are lots of startups coming even from our students' uh, practices we are seeing here also in various parts of different colleges. that they are coming up with uh, different uh, efficient solutions which are having lesser shutdown time and having a lot more efficiencies. Which I, been I, will, I will share my personal experience. Yes. We did one POC at Aikar Bhavan Chandigarh. Though, you know, okay. these, these installations are in thousands uh, mm. particularly in southern and western india but but i we did one poc for for the northern customer uh, for mm. a cpwd uh, owned building where mm. johnson control ibms was installed mm. and was non functional for last couple of years right mm. so we picked up one ahu and we decided to do a poc we started after lunch 
and before the office was over yeah we could we could show them that remotely how they can switch on and switch off the machine yeah and see the relevant you know parameters that are that are to be monitored so yeah. i i think this is this is something you know uh, which is which is uh, it's it's not a not much of a you know time that uh, the user would require to spare uh, and uh, stay worried about loss of productivity because of the shutdown mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. system can be delivered in very very short times the one last question we will take it's yeah. from mr abdul rafi he is asking uh, to what extent in percentage india is implementing ibms compared with other developed countries if you can put some light on it <coughs> i i feel uh, ibms is being uh, you know specified in all the major buildings that are coming up these days uh, as i said in my one of one of my slides ibms till now has been targeted and probably this is true for the developed countries also uh, when we are when you know when we are talking about the wired solution that we have been implementing till now uh, it has been true for other countries also it has been true for india also that it has been offered only in the new constructions coming up so if you uh, look at the pace of construction that is going on in india and compare it with any of the places in europe or uh, north america or uh, to say it uh, developed countries yeah. the number of buildings that are coming up in countries like india is much much larger then mm-hmm. then the new constructions we are taking up uh, i i read about one study in uh, from mckinsey which said every is good. so as of now the implementation uh, in developing countries is much higher than what yeah. we see in the developed countries yes sir i hope this answers the query with this uh, we once again thank you so much sir for your valuable time and we heartily invite you to come amongst the hotels of shivadik sometime to visit at, at jp university we will be having a lot more intellectual discussions in this regards thank, really so thank you so much thank you so much so with this i'll like to invite our next speaker for today uh, i'll just uh, share his uh, credentials one So our next speaker for today will be uh, architect Sukumar Jairat. He is the principal architect for the Studio by Design. He is a first generation entrepreneur, graduated from PEC and an MBA from UBS Chandigarh. He is a strategist and um, Sukumar Jairat sir is very sensitive young architect who has been working conspicuously draw and drawing attention to the dynamics of space and form. his strength lies in creating a new architectonic vocabulary where form and function are never independent of each other but exist in a synergy that addresses the client's requirement and the site specific considerations he is currently the director of studio by design art and architecture and also vice chairman of indian institute of architects panchkula center he has undertaken numerous commercial sports buildings residential industrial institutional and landscape and interior design projects all over north india and overseas sir has done his b arch and mca uh, so he will be giving a very wonderful talk on walk the talk on green buildings not just the theoretical aspects but what are the present aspects so with this brief introduction I like to invite uh, architect Sukumar Jairat ji so to give his brief presentation. Sukumar ji with me yeah thank you Tanmay yeah, for the very uh, warm introduction and that was this is not talking to the students is something which is always happening and always welcome <laughs> so a very very warm welcome to all present as architects and civil engineers we are blessed actually we are blessed to you know somewhat to be in the same profession as god himself you know as creator <laughs> to be you know to be able to create edifices that would long outlive us and 
to be able to make our signatures on the planet. This gives me a tremendous uh, feeling of achievement and satisfaction. In today's times, we have access, a huge access to all the technology and we take pride in designing buildings, which are visual symbols of our creative skills. But we all know, you know the first dictum of architecture, which is form follows function. So in our, uh, you know, in our intention to create forms, which are, you know, which are visual symbols of our creativity, we sometimes tend to avoid the functionalities of buildings, which is very, very important and something, you know, which has come to be seen as so strongly in the present times. You know, so, so, since the buildings are huge guzzlers of all the resources, we need to be very, very aware as to what type of buildings we are designing and what are their impact on the environment. Talking about Himachal, I have a small, I have a lot of affinity for Himachal. My parents were educationists. They were teaching in the Himachal University when I was a kid. And ever since, I have been very, very close and very, very, uh, you know, very, very attached to the hills. I have a small place for myself in Dharampur, near to where, where your college is. And yeah. when I took up that place, you know, uh, I wanted to do, to do something which was as in, inconspicuous, you know, as subtle mm -hmm. and as laid back as I could, you know, to blend with stuff and all. So when I would invite you to come to that place sometime, it is very unassuming. It is very simple, not at all loud and, you know, pro pro proclaiming itself. But this is a place where one can use, which one can use for the entire year without ever, whether it is summer or winter or something, it's never harsh. And it is always, uh, you know, energy point of view, say it is very, very friendly. Uh, IDBC, uh, actually, I've not been into green buildings for a long time. IDBC is what I ventured into just a couple of years back when I attended this IDBC course. And then subsequently, after being familiarized with all the aspects, I uh, you know, got this IDBC accreditation. I got a, uh, you know, this... IEBC pro professional degree and then uh, the next building which I did, we are working for the Chitkara Education Trust, Chandigarh, we are doing their educational institutions in Himachal and in uh, Punjab as well in Chandigarh too. And there was this new school building which they want, wanted us to do and I thought that, you know, this was the time I should get this thing building, you know, get this building into a green building. That was our first attempt, uh, our first formal attempt at green architecture and uh, so consciously, I'll just uh, take you through the entire process, the entire set of uh, things which we adhered to and which we uh, took care of while de designing and implementing the building. And with God's grace and with IDBC's support, we were able to get a platinum rating, a very coveted rating for the first building. And I'm grateful to the IDBC for having handheld us in the entire process and also to our entire team in the Chitkara University, which uh, you know gave its consent and uh, uh, enabled us to do the building in the way we wanted it to, to, uh, to be done. So I'll just take you through the process and I'll uh, familiarize you with the <clears throat> all the aspects of that. Sure. Yeah, so this is the school building that we did. I mean, we wanted it to be a architecturally we wanted it to be a structure which would you know be a landmark and which would uh, you know basically make its presence felt so that is something which the client also wanted us to do so this is a building which architecturally you know uh, gives you a, a, a character of being a model building it has certain elements to it which are symbolic of education and uh, you know you, you see these inverted pencils here you see these alphabets here you know which basically again you know speak of education so When we do a, I'll just now talk of you know, the green aspect of it. Now, when we do a green building, uh, there is a very structured format we need to take care of. Uh, the elements which you see outlined in green are the aspects which are to be taken care of. And each aspect has certain sub points which have you know, some points attached to it. So when you attempt these aspects and you uh, give relevant documentation, of having conformed with all the activities connected with these aspects, you are able to get those points. And if you get a, you know, a specific number of points, you are able to achieve that specific rating. So the aspects are site selection and planning ones. So in that uh, aspect, there are sorry, sorry sir, to interrupt sorry. 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 So if you can just a uh, little bit uh, zoom it in uh, to the document, we will be able to see better. Uh, okay, right sure. now, it is in hundred percent mode, so the visibility sure, okay. is better. Now. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, is this better? Yes, sir. Great, sir. Yes, great. Sir. Thank you. Sir. All right. Yeah. So this is, you know, when we talk of the first element, this is site selection and planning. So in in this aspect, we are looking at the topsoil preservation. This is very important, and this is the uh, credit one, which uh, is to be seen when. So whenever we are ex excavating, we need to preserve the topsoil so that we are able to use that topsoil since it's a fertile soil rich in minerals. We need to you know. Uh, pre uh, uh, we, we need to save it so that we can use it subsequently for the landscaping and everything. And in the site selection, the second aspect is eco-friendly commuting practices so that there are not too many vehicles which are required to be used when you use this place. And so the parking and the uh, pollution issues are addressed. The parking capacity has to be adequate. We have to uh, make sure that the design follows the parking norms and it provides for the parking in that way. Uh, we need to minimize the heat exposure to the sun uh, now, the heat exposure is basically you know, through the roof and the non-roof areas. So that is something which we need to confirm to. I'll come down to the details later. And the universal design, which basically uh, means that all the people, whether they have certain... Again, turf design. Turf design means what is the amount of grass which you are using. Grass, you know, I don't know happens to be a gusher of water. So you need to be careful as to what is the amount of grass that you are planting. Water efficient landscaping means that whatever are the uh, landscaping practices and the landscaping, uh, the watering of the landscape, we need to be aware of that. Water efficient irrigation system and water use monitoring. Then the third aspect is conserving and harvesting of energy. Again, the energy harvesting is done by the use of energy efficient fans and energy efficient fixtures and energy efficient appliances, metering, submetering, on-site renewable energy usage, and solar water heating systems. Again, all these are to be illustrated and demonstrated in the IGDC report, which you need to submit. If you have you know, a proper demonstration of all this, you will be able to get the relevant points which will add to your rating. Eco-friendly materials need to be used. Uh, in that, the organic waste to, uh, management needs to be followed. The use of local materials also is important. Then the next aspect is indoor environmental quality in which the areas of each classroom in case of an institutional building need to be seen whether they are commensurate with the type of usage of the, you know, the number of people which you are using the classroom for. Anthropometric dimensions of spaces means that the furniture and the other elements in the interiors are of the same size and scale as the users are. So in this case, we were very conscious of that. We use the, we design the furniture also in the, in the manner that each classroom, each occupant, the size of, uh, you know, each uh, occupant is taken care of while designing the furniture as well. Daylighting, uh, is a very important element in indoor environmental quality. So we, we need to make sure that the quantity of daylight which enters the room is adequate. So fresh air ventilation is also very important. Toxin-free environment, dust-free environment, exhaust system, and building flush out. Building flush out is that when you are when you have constructed the building, the building should be uh, freed from all the toxins which are which might have entered during the process of the con of the construction. Health and hygiene, now the, the next elements are basically for, for the administration to do. Architecturally, uh, it's not uh, a part of the architecture too much, but the administration needs to take care of the health and hygiene elements, which uh, means access to healthy food, minimal sports amenities, dedicated playground, organic fertilizers, by pesticide, green housekeeping. Then the green education is also a part of the requirement, which is there for us to get a green certification and there also if there are any innovative practices in terms of you know practicing of green uh, uh, certain activities which are indicated towards green uh, buildings so that is also something which is always required so these are the verticals basically on the basis of which uh, a green building is analyzed and evaluated and on the basis, and on the basis of which the accreditations are granted So, in the first 
case, you know, when uh, I'll come to the first thing now, the local building regulations. Now, any building which is supposed to have uh, a credit of green architecture and IDBC rating needs to be conversant or familiarized or following the laws of the local building. I'm sorry, sir, we lost your mic connection. We are not able to hear you, Sukumar, sir. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yes, sir. Now it's how hard it is. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So these are the documents. I'll just maybe illustrate. They, they're not very relevant, but I'll just illustrate them to you. So you now having these, like the possession certificate, the building approval certificates from the local authorities, uh, the site plan, you know, all the flow plans. And the area calculations, you know, these are to be deposited to the IGBC for them to see whether you have complied with the local regulations and uh, the building is as per the local bylaws and all. So for topsoil preservation, you know, these are certain pictures which are of our project, which are indicative of the fact that the soil which was excavated was preserved and stockpiled and then subsequently it was used for the landscaping. So you need to demonstrate through pictures that the topsoil, which in our case, you know, was up to a depth of 10 inches, we have basically used that and uh, finally used, uh, used it in the landscaping. Now in the eco-friendly commuting practices, we needed to demonstrate that 50% of the students and teachers will, uh, more than 50% of the students and teachers will transit by school bus. So for, for that, you know, we gave in a de declaration. The parking capacity, the announced parking capacity of the school buses was to be demonstrated, which we demonstrated and the adequate area was taken care of by us. Then uh, the next element was the minimization of the exposure to the sun. So we need to design in a way that the terrace areas need to be minimally exposed to the sun and whatever are the ex exposed areas, we need to cover those areas with roofings or, or tiles which basically are painted or are provided with reflective facility which uh, adds a minimal heat load to the building and the air conditioning uh, system is also not very heavily, uh, you know, it is not heavy. Universal design in our case was taken care of by adequate ramps which uh, provided the main access to the school building, which had been demonstrated here and the ramps of the slopes uh, are also to be taken care of. One is 10 is the minimum slope which we need to provide for, for entry and exit. Besides giving the required or the designated slopes to the ramps, we also need to provide for uh, uh, universally abled uh, people who have some handicap. And we need also to provide a lift with braille assistance to be able to take care of the specially able places, uh, people. So with all these things, we need to, uh, you know, pro pro provide documentation. In this case, you know, these are the documentations in, in this particular site plan we have provided for the earmark, the parking place for the people with a handicap. And accordingly, we have also provided uh, the documentation regarding the location of the restrooms for the physically challenged and the ramp locations like I showed you in the pictures have also been defined in these drawings which we presented to the IGBC to basically uh, assure them that this is what the provisions have been done. Now when we look at the rainwater harvesting for the roof and drawn roof, there are certain formats of calculations which we need to describe 
so we need to basically first calculate the amount of rainfall which is there in that area uh, on the basis of the data provided by the imd and then we need to describe as to what is the harvesting which we have done of the rain which we have been getting over one year of time so all this is done by calculations and in this case uh, just these are the calculations these are certain pictures which have been uh, you know which are of the rain water harvesting system and at the end we needed to basically describe that you know based on the area we have been able to recharge 80% of the peak hour rain runoff so this is very important that whatever is the rainfall area you whatever is the rainfall that you get on site what what is the type of recharging of the rain or the ground water that you are doing in your school campus then uh, this this is the type of these are the type of surfaces these are you know there are certain surfaces which are cemented or tiled there is some open grid concrete pavement there some artificial turf so all these surfaces have different percolation coefficients and all these surfaces have different amount of water absorption so as per the runoff coefficient we have this calculation done in which the calculation of the runoff of water is calculated and this is how we have demonstrated that 80% 87% of that total runoff water has been harvested by us so these are certain documents uh, which come from the uh, people who did the rain water um, uh, harvesting pits for us so in in our case there was no uh, you know proper green uh, uh, you know the grassy clay playground so grass happens to be a gazzler so we have we have you know this artificial turf on our campus in which we have used for the playing activities of the kids in the water efficient landscaping uh we have used all the native and drought tolerant species and you know we have indicated all these species in the uh, document and basically uh, 100% of the uh, vegetation or the landscaping that we have done uh is by using the drought tolerant species we uh, we needed to attached we needed to attach a, a plan which showed the uh, type of plantation that we did again the harvesting the irrigation system needed needed to be done you know through a process which minimizes the wastage of water so in our case we have used the drip irrigation and wherever irrigation is required the minimal water wastage is there the waste water treatment has also been done by us you know the dstp takes care of the usage of uh, you know uh, basically the uh, uh, cleaning of the sewage water that came out of our site and the use of treated water is being done for the landscaping and the uh, you know we have also uh, uh, given some water to local people for watering water use monitoring was done by us so again this is something which is normally done so eco friendly refrigerants had been used in the campus and then energy efficient lighting fixtures were used by us so basically we needed to demonstrate what is the type of saving that we do by using energy efficient lighting fixtures so for each and every area that we did the amount of energy efficient fixtures which we have uh, you know used the energy consumption and the energy con consumption which we have done by using the uh, uh, energy efficient fixtures have been demonstrated by us so for all the flows the base case scenario and the proposed scenario for all the flows has been given to them and on that the, that basis you know the demonstration of saving uh, 68% of energy vis-a-vis -vis the conventional lighting fixtures has been demonstrated by us so that is uh, what is to be shown to the igbc for them to understand what is the energy saving which you are doing by using energy saving devices again for the by the use of ceiling fans uh, you know all this calculation by using fans have been described also by by using other appliances which have a be three star rating or a four star or a five star rating all this you know these are the various indoor spaces of the school the air the air conditioners and all that uh, 
the refrigerators and all they also are energy submitting is also done so uh, in our case i'm i'm not an electrical engineer so i'll not be able to get into much of this but uh, basically the plant at, at the school the sub submitting was done and uh, uh, this was the pcc panel in which all the submitting was done and uh, you know the energy efficiency was taken care of now uh, we have we have also uh, tried to uh, have renewable energy on site so we have a 50 kilowatt solar water uh, solar pv plant on the roof and this you know all this uh, solar pv on the roof basically uh, uh, takes care of that 10% of the total energy demand is generated by the use of uh, renewable source of energy which are these solar panels waste segregation of also is not a very complicated thing to do so we have taken care of the waste wet the waste you know the dry the wet and the paper waste to be provided for and uh, collected independently uh, solar water heating system is given on site organic composters are given and the uh, management of organic uh, you know the preparation of organic compost is uh, provided for then another thing uh, in green buildings is the use of local um, materials for construction so the aim behind this is that we are, we don't we should not be requiring uh, to have a lot of transportation cost or you know pollution involved in getting material to the building site and accordingly using it so we need to describe to the igbc as to what is the distance from which the various building stuff is procured and uh, accordingly the bills and the documents for all this needs to be submitted to the igbc and uh, in our case we were able to provide for six almost 60% of the material locally locally means within a radius of 40 kilometers then in tobacco free smoke control is taken care of by us so we need to provide all these signages on site now uh, coming to the minimum daylight requirements in the room so uh, for each classroom we need to provide a minimal daylight factor which is 2.5 so in our case we exceeded the minimal daylight factor we were at 2.95 or 3.14 in most of the classrooms so for all the floors we had to describe the number of classrooms and the the number of regularly occupied spaces and accordingly the daylight factor we needed to provide for on all the floors now the daylight factor is to be carefully balanced with the amount of heat which is entering the rooms so in our case the selection of glass was done very uh, uh, carefully so that you get the amount of light which is required but you don't end up getting too much of heat inside the building which adds to the air conditioning load so for all the facades which we did we selected the glass appropriately so that we are able to have a, a balance between the amount of light and the amount of heat which enters the classrooms so solar control glass we, we did a simulation and the solar control uh, glass was procured accordingly so for the fresh air ventilation uh, of each and every classroom we are uh, we, we we are required to make sure that 30% of the openings are provided compared to the carpet area area of regularly occupied spaces so if you have a 100 square foot of carpet area you need to provide for 30% of of the, of the openings which are openable so uh, openable means that they should be able to let in uh, air and uh, oxygen so so that is something which we need to demonstrate so the openable areas these are the carpet areas need to be demonstrated for igbc to know that you are letting in proper amount of air and you know the ventilation is proper so these were the fresh air calculations that we submitted to them for all the floors for all the uh, occupied spaces so we were at a 30.4% of openable area for the regularly occupied spaces then the area of classroom per student also needs to be shown to them so that the spaces are not claustrophobic they are not difficult to use 
so accordingly uh, the number of students per classroom when you know, compared to the classroom area what has to be submitted and uh, these calculations are there for you to see talking of indoor uh, uh, comfort and convenience we need to make sure that the anthropometrics are taken care of in our case we designed each classroom differently the furniture of each classroom was designed differently so that the size of the kids for each and every class was properly accounted for while designing the chairs and the tables for them so this is what we demonstrated for each classroom there were different type of furniture arrangements and furniture designs and furniture sizes even for the washroom you know the uh, uh, the heights and the sizes of the facilities were accordingly done टॉयलेट <laughs> this so after having uh, you know taken care of all these elements we have been able to procure almost 80 points for um, out of 100 and uh, on that basis we have been given a, a platinum certification so that is what uh, the end achievement has been and after having gone through this process and uh, you know taken care of all these aspects in a very structured manner i feel that you know this is something which all of us can because with this this was our first attempt and uh, if yeah. properly attempted with a good team work this is something which is not rocket science and all of us can try and adopt these methodologies and you know get the uh, certifications of and also feel as responsible citizens and responsible uh, technocrats you know doing buildings which are friendly to our mother nature thank you very much for your patience thank you thank you thank you so much sir uh, one query was there regarding how many are the satisfactory for satisfactory results what are the minimum marks in igbc system so i guess you have just shown that 80 marks have been achieved and that give has been given a platinum rating so yeah. that, that was addressing the same yeah so so they start with silver and then they, they go to gold and then subsequently they go to platinum so silver is the minimum rating in which 60 odd marks are required which is something which is not at all difficult you know uh, mm. uh, given the type of support and hand, hand holding which one gets from igbc i think uh, uh, all of us could they you know try and uh, at least achieve that much and you know try and do building which are friendly yeah and they don't add too much to the cost that's what i also want to assure they don't want yeah. add too much to the cost of the building which is something reassuring for the people who are promoters and developers and, and our clients in our case I have been more than happy to adopt all these things, and they have not uh, minded the additional cost at all. It was not much, in fact. Yeah. That, that, that's what comes in mind when whenever a platinum rating building comes. That how much will be the one-time cost? That that's a concern to many people. It may be, I from my opinion, it may be around twenty to thirty percent more, or it, is it yeah, lesser yeah. than that? Actually, it all depends on how you assimilate the design and all that. Twenty-five yeah. percent is actually, uh, you know, the, I think the uh on the on a yeah. higher side i would assess it to be below 20% if things are oh. properly man managed and designed from the design process itself you know when things are doing done in a retrofit uh, situation then sometimes the cost estimations happen but when you integrate the entire process in the design itself from the yeah. beginning then yeah. i would do you know, think that between 15 and 20% cost estimation oh. you can achieve a platinum uh, situation yes there's no doubt about that And uh, and surely the savings in maybe next twenty to thirty years you will of be course. getting much more. Of course, absolutely, absolutely, and also the satisfaction of being there in a building which is yeah. you know you know which is good for your health and uh, for, for your well-being and everything. Yeah, so that is a huge achievement. Yes, yeah. One comment was coming that if there isn't any disqualifying uh, uh, criteria also there if in the IDBC platinum rating or in the rating, so. Yeah. See, they have. Yeah, yeah. They have. They have certain things which are compulsory. 
so in each category like i said you know in in all the verticals in each, there is something which is absolutely com compulsory and there are certain things which fetch you points so if there is something which you are not adhering to something which is compulsory and that you are not adhering to it that is not allowed so you need to conform to those compulsory aspects and then after having uh, responded to or conform to all those things then you need to you know additionally uh, get those points by giving your inputs and all that so there are yeah. certain things in every category once you go through the igbc document you will see the you know the minimum uh, uh, compulsory aspects which you need to conform to in every vertical which i talked about correct sir so sir we once again congratulate you to completing this building in a platinum rating and uh, in a brief time and with a very cost effective manner so uh, it will be my humble request that if you visit sometime whenever to your home town you do visit us also and we can have maybe a more elaborate discussion on maybe one or two aspects because students may not be able to catch the calculations in this brief period which yes, we I had understand. yes so sure. that kind of personal interaction if we can have yeah. some time for our students yeah. that will be a great yeah we will we will coordinate and we will uh, coordinate it very shortly i will get back to you sure that would be it sir thanks so once again we thank you so much sir with great. this thank now uh, let us move ahead for our third and last presentation for the day and it will be delivered by mr harshit behel who is the director technical for suntech ag mr harshit is a serial entrepreneur leader and strategist he is an expert in developing technology growth hacking negotiating through effective business communications getting things done by focusing on operational management and passionate for product and process design he has developed and designed air group combining the best of air purifiers humidifiers and plant valves into one innovative product air group creates solutions to enhance the connection between nature and human friendly environments indoor today he will be delivering his session on green walls and biophilic design and with this i would like to invite mr harshit behel here on the podium and start with his presentation over to you Hello. sir yes sir uh, can you hear me yeah we are able to hear you very <laughs> hi thank you for the introduction and i'm quite happy to be here with you all i think we have already gone way past the time that we were supposed to <laughs> you the can please go ahead with it Uh, no, not nothing like this. You can please feel free to have your presentation. Okay. Audience are very patient, and I thank audience also to give us a little more time than what we were supposed to take. Just a bit. Sure. we'll share the attendance link also very shortly as has been asked in the chat repetitively Uh, during the presentation you can fill the feedback form and your questions and queries if there are some and regarding the presentation materials if we are able to get it from the speakers we will definitely assume reassure that we will disseminate it with you guys thank you once again for your patience with the, the sessions getting longer but i hope that uh, these sessions are very informative and these will be beneficial for your future growth <laughs> yes i should uh, we are able to see your ppt now in full screen mode yeah so uh, this is on biophilic design uh, if we talk about like if we ask the people that what is that they would feel happy about if they are in certain atmosphere or environment so since so since this is not a live uh, in person so we could have a hand raise and a interactive session about that 
But yeah. normally, what people are happy are like right now we are sitting in our buildings or inside the rooms or offices. So the preferred area would be to be uh, in the mountains or in the nature or somewhere near the ocean. So instead of having that, uh, sometimes when you go out, uh, our building should. Uh, have these features inside it only so that uh, it is better for our uh, mental health and our production uh, productivity uh, this is a small video that i would start with so what biophilic design is mm -hmm. So basically, human beings should be happy in the nature only. That is the basic criteria that is required. Natural life that is what we want in our building. Having plants in Natural material as much as we could use. Uh, in case of a business, like in case of a office building, like the major cost that they have, the energy cost is only one person. Nine percent is the rental cost, and ninety percent is basically the salaries, uh, the human resource cost that they have. And if we could improve uh, their work conditions they perform better and even a 10 person variation in that would be huge benefits for any organization the same applies for the uh, schools and colleges and uh, residential areas also so so why now the biophilic design because uh, stress related illness primary cause uh, sickness by 2020 this was who and right now after uh, having this COVID and people sitting indoors, their uh, health has been deteriorated quite drastically. And uh, we spend like, uh, we were spending like 100% of the time indoors. Uh, normally also, we spend a considerable amount of time indoors and those places need to be designed in a certain way that our uh, health is better in those areas. And uh, in learning spaces also, if we have the right uh, connection with the nature, then you have better uh, cognitive abilities and increased ability to focus and reduce symptoms through attention deficit order, uh, reduce stress and aid in met mental and physical recuperation. And key benefit is uh, construction of key construction of biophilic design is contact with nature. So the more in contact we are with the nature, the more happier we would be and more better uh, our mood and everything would be. And so the natural materials and all those, and that is how you design a building that is better in all sense for which is designed actually around the people who are going to occupy the building, not the building has been designed and people are put inside those buildings to stay or live or work. So there are 14 parent patterns of biophilic design. Uh, these, uh, this would take a time, but normally it is visual connection with the nature and non-visual is your smell, the sound and all those things. And thermal air, uh, these are basically normal. Anybody could search this and go into details because this would take time. So I will skip this, but this is an important thing. So 14 patterns of biophilic design is important. Uh, a direct connection, these are multiple studies and new are coming in uh, post COVID also. And so I will still skip. I will go to the main pattern further. Uh, the green in the interior spaces. So this can improve your mental health. So this, even if we imagine to be in such place, we would, uh, uh, our emotions and our hormones would uh, go in a positive way. And so this is 
these studies are there, but you can naturally also uh, understand why this would be happening. And there are multiple studies. Uh, and the the as the previous speaker also told about the natural light exposure that is required. So because these are uh, associated with our cardiac rhythms also, and so when we have the natural light, it automatically uh, has those color variations that are required. And so this is the cardiac rhythm. So in the morning, you have a uh, different colors that are required, and as you go towards the evening, they are mostly towards the blue bluish tone and starts with the uh, reddish tone. And this would actually have a very big impact on people. Uh, in case you change the color tones uh, against the nature, then people have very difficulty living in that space. And the body kind of rejects this because all the uh, systems that are inside our body and the hormones, they tend to go on this. This is natural lighting, how this could be incorporated. Uh, this is again human spatial response prospect. So different studies are there. I would still skip this. I will go towards what practical we are doing right now. Uh, because these studies you can always find online and uh, no point covering too much since we are already in uh, so workers in office environment with natural elements, so they are reported for 15% higher well, uh, level of well-being and 6% more productive and 15% more creative. In case they are sitting in a dingy office, then uh, their productivity goes down. And so biophilic design enhances education environment, reduces stress and heart rate and blood pressure. So and enhances focus concentration. These are all things that we could understand very easily. This is what Hi, this is Harsha from Center Aging. And this I just explained how the air works. And this is a small picture of speaking. The world is the most advanced. Mars is the most advanced green world technology on the planet. Indoor air is absorbed through the unique root system of the plants into an inorganic growth medium which needs no traditional soil. Microbes in our unique root system purify and cleanse the air from harmful chemicals. Chosen pure, clean, fresh air at the perfect humidity level. And we use all reality free plants as a fully automated watering, airflow, and lighting system, creating the perfect ambiance. So, so here on the right, we have a diagram explaining how the ecosystem works. On the left, we have the image of the new... Actually, I'm quite sorry to interrupt. Your voice is a little breaking and maybe it's not coming at one. So I go again back to the right side of the image. So the air is being absorbed with this uh, biofilm. Can you hear it? Of the plants. And in the air, you have the VOCs, which are mostly hydrogen. Two sources, I guess. Yeah. Are then absorbed by the nanocharcoal medium that is placed inside. So the plants are growing in a nano charcoal system. They do not have any soil in it and even no cocoa peat is there. So then we have the microbes that have been already inoculated in these root zones and these microbes break down these uh, hydrocarbons into sugar and starch which is then taken up by the plant as a food and the plant grows. And the byproduct of this will be only the old leaves of the plants that will be falling down, so that have, those have to be cut off and thrown away or composted to make a good compost of them. And then we have the sensors measuring everything. So now we have made an AI system which can manage this 24 7. And since due to the units that have, that have already been installed and the data coming to us on our servers, we can also make it work without the uh, internet connection. So since uh, we know how it on what parameters it has to work, so that can be uh, 
uh, already encoded into it and as artificial intelligence and should be working on it. So, so how the AGO system looks. So below is the water tank system inside. And from the top, the air will be coming out. And this whole wall of plants is a biofilter. And then you have its own grow light system. So the lights have been registered to the frequency uh, acceptable for the plants. Uh, normally, they prefer blue and red light. And blue light is much more preferred for the photosynthesis, in which we have more of the leaves coming in. In case we want to have any flower or fruit from the plant, then we need uh, red light. Um, so normally a purple light is being uh, made for the grow systems. But what happens in uh, when we grow vegetables, we use that. And since we do not have to think about the visuals. So in this around 10% of uh, green is being added. So it goes towards the whiteness of the light and so that it is soothing to the eyes of the people who are moving around it. So that's the main uh, purpose of this. So this is the custom system, how the system can be incorporated. Normally, custom systems are developed when we design a new building. So then we set the darkness and uh, incorporate these in from the initial stages. So the freestanding is what the air system is. So they can be placed anywhere inside any building, any room, and they are ready to work from day one. And then we have a hybrid system in which we make a system which is then connected to the air supply system, the HVAC system. So that can be done for us like uh, for each office or each area, and it can be supplied to that area. And then we have a fully integrated system in which the we have a bigger game wall system and that is connected to the HVAC system which then supplies air to the whole of the building. Normally what happens in the your existing HVAC system also you will be taking 10 15 percent of the air every cycle from outside which is then again cleaned and then put inside the system and again it has to be cooled down so that is a very major cost for cooling so with the help of these indoor bio filters we can produce our own uh, new air that is required so since we are taking oxygen giving out uh, carbon dioxide the plants are doing the reverse and they can balance it out only thing is in case we put them on the floor so the amount of plants required would be much more higher and since more of the air purification happens at the root zone so the root zone has to be uh, exposed to the air then only it works so this hydroponically managed system is a, a single plant can work 10x very easily due to the uh, vacuum being developed behind it and air being pulled through the root zone of the plants and plus the activity and charcoal over there. So this is one of the offices. This is the Bajan Lal Global Impact Foundation office. So this office has zero windows and they had around 60 people inside uh, sitting for 60 people. And this is a biofilter uh, installed and we are, are circulating air through this system. And if we see at the bottom side of the green wall, there is a sitting area, and below that is the whole bottling and stacking system, plus the control system are below that. So this wall supplies here to this whole system. And uh, these are the multiple. So this is the recreational area on the top. This This is the initial iterations of the air room one. So this you have in six feet height and the eight feet height also we were making now since the we have fall ceiling. So this we prefer to go for only a six uh, six feet height system. So but what we have done is increase the quantity of plants that are coming. So it is coming put to the eight feet height system in a six feet system. So 
So this is a burn for framing uh, that we specialize in. This is a uh, Japanese technology in which what we do is we burn the wood and uh, the sap of the wood is taken out by burning it and only the grains are left and then we scrub it off, wash it and then we have a raw gray skin open pore wood. Uh, this wood can now not be eaten by any or rotting of the wood is not possible. <laughs> the other thing that we have to do is dip them in oil. So once they are thoroughly oiled and they seep in, the oil seeps in, then they're ready to be used and you get a very good combination with the uh, green and the wood. So it is just, just like a um, tree bark that you have and a natural texture and no coatings or nothing is required on this and this will remain like this for many years only thing that you may have to do is the reconditioning in the reconditioning what we have to do is uh, just give them more oil so for example with the feather and the water falling on that the oil can come out and after one year or two years or every year a little dab of oil is required on that. So this is a Procter Gamble uh, campus in Bali. This is an outdoor system. So we, I'm just showing one indoor and one outdoor. So this is uh, from outdoor they are taking in air and this uh, is a picture on the day we installed it and then after around 35 40 days, uh, when what went for the first maintenance and to cut off the growth that is coming into mm -hmm. the situation over there. This is a small indoor unit. This uh, basically is a tabletop system in which you could uh, grow your plants and this does not require any sunlight outside. So in your offices or any place on your desk, you could have this and this has a self-watering system. So once you uh, top it up uh, for next 15 days, it doesn't require any water and all your plants will be growing in this only. This is the first, this has been made uh, Initially with the scrap wood, the waste wood that we get from the packing material and uh, in this wood only, this whole uh, planting system was developed initially and now the uh, final versions are basically made on CNC again with a re-engineered wood system and this was again a uh, waste product, uh, the ply waste that we have in, in our, one of our factories. So when we do interiors, whatever wastage is left, uh, these planters have been made with that only and they basically manage your plant. So you do not have to worry about taking them out or anything. They have the, uh, the natural light frequency that is required for the plants to maintain their health and they keep on growing inside. The only thing is the water has to be topped up uh, after some time. Uh, depending upon how much air conditioning you are using. In case you are using, uh, you are not using the air conditioning, the time goes up to like 20 days. And in case the air conditioning is uh, used extensively, then because it will be taking out the moisture a lot, and then it would go down to like 10 to 12 days. Uh, this is my factory only. So this is the common wall. Uh, this is one of the uh, massive walls that we have. Uh, Actually, there is a double wall uh, of this size only. Uh, this wall is like uh, seven years old. And this is not being made in any plastic pots or all those things. This is made in a fabric. And this is what actually we use in indoor systems also. Because the major thing is the plants need to breathe through its root zone. 
and uh, in plastic cups and all those things the major problem is you cannot have this kind of a density of plants and secondly because uh, after some times uh, there would be a root coil inside those plastic pots and they will start dying so normally whoever has experienced uh, like with green walls initially they look good but after like few months only they start drying up uh this is also a hydroponic system so all the water that goes into it is recollected so this works on only 10% of the water so 90% of water is saved in this and whatever excess water comes in is recollected uh in a sum and then recirculated as and when required uh we have two system one is a basic timer system or a second in which it uh, it connects with the internet and according to whether it keeps on giving the water and the temperature that is Uh, coming up over there, and and this is from the other side. Ah, uh, this so this the air grow technology that I am explaining is has many awards, and we were awarded by the Union Home Minister Mr. H S Puri ah uh, for innovating these smart grid technologies, and. Uh, This is me, Harshad Bahel, and this is my contact number. So we have a big factory in Pachpuda, three Haryana. So three, four, five minutes from here. And if you have any questions, you can ask me or mail me. I can respond to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Harshad, for yeah. your brief and very effective presentation on biophilic design and a proper solution to it. Uh, through the air flow so <clears throat> there is one or two queries <coughs> which are there in the chat box first is regarding will this system attract uh, any kind of insects or maybe which may be bad for humans or something uh, no why because uh, if in case it is outdoor then it would be no issue with that uh, mm-hmm. because that would be coming in and what we do normally is the water in that water only we have uh, retarders for these insect because other insects, and normally the plants that are used they are not edible plants so normally they do not get in those kind of insect only thing is the mosquitoes and all those could be there but for yeah. that since this is a recirculatory system so the water is constantly circulating in this so those also don't come and when and we go for the indoor system so in the indoor system once that Plant has come in. It is sterilized first, and this is not growing in soil. Okay. This growing in activated charcoal. So this is a hydroponic system. So in this, uh, if you put any medicine in the water, that also sterilizes that. And once yeah. it is sterilized, then there is no chance of uh, insect coming in until unless you have like things open and the insect come in. That is natural. Then again, since this is. uh it's very easy to disinfect it just put few drops in the water and so it is circulating all over so it would kill off anything there is one more question i think the question contradicts itself or it, uh, it is asked that also the design requires a lot of space as per your first few slides will be suited for urban or rural areas so this is basically going vertically so we are covering yeah. the wall yeah for example in uh, the one that i showed in my factory or proctor gamble so these are like this is a common wall between yeah. my factory and the other factory so in other cases also so this only takes like 6 uh, inches for the system and then the plants also come out like 6 inches more and then so that is a very less and the, like in my factory i have more than 90000 plants in these walls so and they are like uh, growing and they do not die because they their roots basically puncture the fabric so they yeah. get air from the below also and uh, water in you cannot overwater it also because when you water it over it drenches out and goes back into the sump so even if we keep it on for the whole day that is uh, it is a space saving yeah yeah it's a space saving solution and a very wonderful solution what are the cost implications like for a 6 feet by 6 feet panel Yeah, uh, what in in what range generally <clears throat> these systems comes up? So it depends upon what uh, system we are going for. So for a non-active yeah. wall, in yeah. which we do not do the air purification and the vacuum system, because that yeah. would involve more fans and all those things. Yeah. Uh, a normal wall would be like seven eight hundred rupees per square foot. Okay. And 
as the sizes increases, the prices go down. And in case we have this active wall, that could go higher. For example, um, in case it is a custom-made wall for the area, it all depends on the size because the pumping and all those things would be one only. Yeah. For a small system also, for a big system also. So that is, uh, again, it depends on what area we are going and how vertically we are going. So in case we do not go more than eight eight feet, then small pumps work. If we go like more than one story, then other pumps and multiple pumps are also required so that in case one fails, we have a backup always. Yeah. So I hope so. This is a patented product or these kind of uh, some other rivals These are also applied for patent of this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, we is, basically is this the only way to make green walls. Or what are the other in industrial way approaches to making green walls, which so we are seeing in different. Which you are seeing normally is the plastic pot that is uh, on a frame, and yeah. the only problem is because it has one drain hole in it. At yeah. the and that drain hole basically chokes after mm. some time because uh, mm. the soil is going to compress in that. So mm. it's the one we saw in the Kara school that presentation also. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, after sometimes those pots would actually choke up, and uh, so they required so when it, that is a small wall still it could be managed. But when we go bigger, so somebody has to climb up and see which choking is happening. So that is a big mm. problem. Those. Yeah. Plus, and we have a direct sunlight coming on those spots. They would heat up and the root zone because there is very less soil quantity in that. So, during summers, they dry up like anything. Yeah. So, we like to invite you to our campus in JP University, Vapna Ghat, and have uh, a few more ideas which we have for medicinal plants because right. this uh, environment is very much uh, suitable for medicinal plants. Yeah. And if we can develop this for indoors also, uh, that can be a breakthrough in this. Uh, so game. when we have, so I am an expert in hydroponic systems. So uh, okay. the only thing is when you do, when we do the ornamental plants, the nutrient yeah. requirement is not that high and that yeah, specific. That, I so that we would have to have few more sensors and the EC and pH of the water would have to be maintained. Right. And right. we will have, Another thing that is required, that is a dosing system that would be required. Mm -hmm. so, because in case it is a normal leafy uh, plant, then yeah. it is easier. Yeah. The, uh, some but some uh, plants which would be flowering and fruiting would require a specific... Yeah, yeah. that will be specific. Lighting will be required, specific nutrients will be required. I, but certain medical plants which we are developing in our biotech department over here, are leaf based and they are of very much use in various medicines. Right. And uh, for the insects also, if we put in few plants, uh, which are yeah. these, so they repel those insects and we could have that also inside. The only thing is the specific requirement of because ornamental plants are very easy to grow and they, hmm. grow, they just need the light and the yeah. water and they work. And yeah. we try not to give too much nutrition also because it will be more job for the people like to come yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so that is good. Sure. One request was coming from our students uh, yes. regarding if they can visit you sometime or some kind of exhibition can be made uh, where the students can see these green walls in action. Yeah, the they could, yeah, they could just call me up and uh, fix up a time. So, this is basically uh, I'm into interiors also. So, my dad is an architect. Yeah. I'm a oh. mechanical engineer. So, we have the factory over here. Chikana, so Chikana. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm testing the patience of my audience. <laughs> so thank you with this note once again. So taking your uh, good amount of time and letting us know regarding the airflow technique which you have invented and which is patent pending, as you are saying. Uh, so once again, we thank you and we definitely will welcome you if you can sometime come up uh, to JP University of Atmanhat and we can have more sessions like this. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So with this, we come to an end to our sessions on the <coughs> latest trends in green buildings. So from the beginning, it has been a very informative webinar session. Uh, in three different sessions, we have seen how green buildings are evolving with the use of latest AI and machine learning techniques 
with the use of various sensors in the buildings, which has been delivered by Mr. Ashwini Bamba, how different players are coming and how it is becoming more globally available and it is rates are also going down. Then we have seen a very beautiful case study of Chitkara International School by architect Sukuma Jairat. He has given a wonderful presentation how he, they have achieved a platinum rating. And in the end, Hashit has given us a very wonderful biophilic design and green wall technique and his patented air grow technique also how their green walls can be made. With this, uh, we like to once again thank all of our participants and all of our speakers for today to be so patient and kindly give this information. At the last, uh, we'll also like to inform that JP University of Information Technology is still giving on-spot admissions against few leftover seats in our BTEC programs in civil engineering and civil engineering with computer applications. Also to our AMTEC programs in construction management, in structural engineering, in environmental engineering. Also, lastly, on the BTEC lateral entry seats are also on offer up till 30th September and only availability will be based on how many seats are remaining. So if some of your nodes uh, are still looking for an admission, they can look up to these programs. With these words, we thank you, uh, we thank you for with heart to attend this session. And, uh, so, and we are also grateful that you are filling the feedback forms. Those who could not, we will again share the link in the chat box and that, that will be the uh, case for today. Thank you once again for attending this webinar and we'll be again uh, be in touch with such more programs. You can give your constructive feedbacks to us what kind of programs we can bring for all of you. Thank you. Thank you a lot.